In this video, we're gonna talk about seven items that you need if you want to step up, if you wanna start, if you wanna bring your portrait photography game to the next level. And the first item that we're gonna talk about is actually what is inside this thing. This is a collapsible and it's basically a massive, massive background that you can bring around anywhere you go and it's made of two colors, one in the front and one is the back. Now, let me show you. It's actually massive, even if it does look like. Oh my goodness. All right, that's huge. Uh, there you go. Doesn't seem that big, right? But it's actually massive, and I use this quite a lot whenever I want to take portraits with a plain background. Now, if you don't want to buy a collapsible, what you can use is just a wall. So depending whether you want a white, you want a gray, maybe it's not great to have it yellow, but then it depends on the color that you want. This thing is really portable. You can bring it anywhere. And even if you want to shoot here in the house or like in my bedroom, it is actually quite easy just to put it there. But this thing has just one problem. And this problem is that it's very difficult to put it back. Obviously, you can buy this with any colors in the front and the back so that you can also pick your own. I paid this around 10 to 15 bucks on eBay, so it's totally up to you if you want to find cheaper or more expensive alternative. This works just fine for me. Once again, there are also some backdrops with textures, and this totally depends on what you have to do with your own portraits, if you need a texture or if you need a plain wall or a plain background. So try them out and see what's the best option for you. Now, the second thing that we're going to talk about, and this is the most important element of portrait photography in general, this is an artificial light. This means that whenever you're trying to shoot with your bulbs in the bedroom or in the living room, your portrait will probably look like, mm, no, not really good, right? So what you want to have is that you want to control the light unless you're shooting outdoor and therefore you can actually kind of use the sun as a light source. In this case, I'm using a Forza 150 right now as a key light and over there I have an FS60B by Nightlight or the best option that I would absolutely recommend is actually having a Forza 60B. This is a very, very tiny light. So this is my hand. This is the Forza 60B that is incredibly powerful and also double color. Plus, the very good thing about this one is that you can power it up with two batteries. There you go. I just attach two normal batteries right here and then eventually I can put a modifier on top of it and I can go around with a small tripod if I need to then shoot portraits outdoor with an artificial light. This one is a big color. This means that I can change it from 2700 Kelvin to actually 6500. So this is a very cold light, let's say, and then Right here, 2700 Kelvin, I have a tungsten color, which is a yellow color. Now, this is a real game changer, but what is actually complementary to this is having a modifier. This means having a softbox on top of it. And what a softbox is, is nothing but a diffuser for your own light that you need to attach on top of the light. And I have it just right here, and I'm gonna show you. This is a parabolic softbox that you just need to attach right in front of uh, the light. These two, they have the same attachment so that you can actually use this one on top of this one and now I'm going to show you exactly how. So basically you've got the normal attachment then you just plug it into it then you rotate and this is fixed. So you can go around outdoor just using batteries and just using artificial light. And this is really, really key because it's gonna make a huge difference in your portraits. This is a Forza 60 softbox. So this is 60 centimeters diameter. Now I already made a video on how softbox works. So you can check out somewhere here. I'm gonna leave the link down in the description below because you can understand a lot uh, regarding light, how many layers of diffusions you need, how the dimension actually affects the photo and so on. And so forth. Now I'm gonna put this one back actually on the Forza 150 because that's the professional result that you want in your portraits and for example in this YouTube video. Now in order to have some sort of even light I'm just pointing the main the key light because I've removed the softbox towards the seal so that it's bouncing back towards me but when I'm gonna put back the softbox the light is gonna be much more dramatic much more cinematic much more professional looking that's what you want also for your portraits. 
Now these are, let's say, professional lights. The cheapest option is actually the FS60B. This one is not powered, it's the same one as the Forza 60, but you cannot attach battery to that one. But in case you're using just in studio or you always have a plug next to you, then this is the way to go because it's actually an amazing light. The quality of the light is actually the same, but this is just cheaper because it doesn't have the capability to have batteries with you. Then there is also much cheaper alternatives that don't have the exact same quality, but are perfect to start. And these are just cheap Amazon softbox. You just go on Amazon, you write literally softbox and anything that you find there could be great to improve your portraits. I started using those and then I upgraded to Nanlet and now I'm a huge Nanlet fan because they actually really, really, really make a big difference. Now, before we move on, I wanna tell you that I have a six day free portrait photography crash course where I teach you loads of different things about photography, it's free. You just need to leave your email in the link down below in the description. And then speaking about lights, there's also another thing that is amazing when doing portraits and this can be used also indoor and outdoor and these are tube lights. This is a Nanlite PowerTube 30C. It's not the latest version. You can also have PowerTube X version, which is the last one, or PowerTube T87X, which are the cheap version of tubes. And these are RGB lights that can be used also as key lights. I've done a few videos using these guys, also taking portraits using these guys, and the result is actually incredible. Even this, you can go from 2700, so you have a yellow light, to actually 6500. So this is a very cold white, let's say, to simulate the sunlight. And then you also be able to go into a HSI. In this case, you're just basically having any color that you want here and you can change uh, saturation, brightness and HSI in three seconds. Plus you also have uh, quite a few effects that you can use in these tubes. The cool thing about these is that are extremely portable and therefore you can just put in your photography bag whenever you're going outdoor. You can have an also a smaller version, the 6C. You can have a bigger version, the 30X or 30C. And these are actually big that you can use indoor or you can use outdoor door in case you're gonna do a shoot outdoor. In general, I use the PowerTip 26C, which is the small version everywhere I go. I have always one with me in the back because they're very small and they're super useful, especially in low light situation. And they will make the skin look so much better rather than not having anything. The next item that we're gonna talk about is actually having prime lenses. This is a zoom lens because it allows to zoom in within the lens. For example, this one is a 17 to 28, whereas a prime lens is a fixed focus length. This one is a 35 f 1.4. Now, what is the difference between a zoom and a fixed lens? Well, obviously with a zoom, you can zoom in and zoom out, whereas with a prime, you cannot zoom in. It's always the same focal length. But the key thing about prime lenses is that they're usually, and I'm saying 99% of the time, sharper than actually lenses. They're actually zoom lenses that are much brighter. That means they have a lower aperture. This is f 1.4. This is f 2.8. Therefore, whenever you have a low aperture, you'll be able to create that amazing amazing bouquet effect whenever you shoot in portraits. And this is really key because everyone loves that bouquet effect. In general, prime lenses are also a bit cheaper than zoom lenses, but that's not always the case because for example, the lens that I'm using to record this YouTube video right now is actually a 50 millimeter F1.2 GM. So it's a G Master by Sony and it's crazy expensive. It's much more expensive than this, which is a zoom lens. It's actually double than this price. So it depends, but in general, as a rule of thumb, these are cheaper sharper, better for portraits, but a little bit less versatile than zoom lenses. In case you're using a phone, the best thing is to use zoomed in camera that you have already native in your phone. So not pinching in your phone, but just use a two or a three pair camera. The iPhone 14 Pro, for example, has the three pair zoom, which is an optical lens and not a digital zoom. And therefore the quality remains the same, but you kind of simulate having a zoomed in lens, let's say. And then we talk about the next one, which is actually having a tripod. I use tripod tripods quite a lot, especially because I'm very often alone when I take portraits and I like to have either behind the scene or just shoot self portraits using a tripod. Now this is key also in case you want to shoot low light photography, in case you want to shoot portraits with some long exposures, you need to have a tripod, otherwise your image will be shaky. Sometimes when I go around and I know that I'm shooting someone else, I don't bring a tripod because I don't really need it, but the majority of the times it's always with me because it allows to have more creativity whenever you're coming up with different ideas to take cool shots. This is Amanfrotto Carbon B3. It's extremely light and it's super sturdy, but in case you wanna go with cheaper options, you can find a million different alternatives online. They're much cheaper and they're also different with sturdiness, with weight, with kind of height as well, and so on and so forth. 
And then the next item that we're going to talk about is this guy right here. And it's one of my favorite pieces of gear. This is a remote and it allows to control the camera. In this case, my Sony's just using these. So whenever I'm alone, I don't need to stand up and change the settings and maybe manually click the buttons to start record or shoot. I just use these. These are extremely cheap on Amazon. I think it's like six or seven bucks and will actually change your life if you've never used one before. Now there is obviously some of you might say, oh yeah, but my camera allows to connect my phone to the camera so I can control it. And yes, Yes, that's also true but many times especially with Sony it takes a while to connect the app if you want to use maybe your phone you can use the app at the same time I don't know I just love having a physical remote to shoot photos and to shoot videos whenever I'm alone but then once again the number one thing if you want to improve your portraits is actually understanding light and in this video I explain you everything you need to know with loads of different examples on how diffusion works I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe and leave it a thumbs up thank you very much for watching and I'm I'm gonna see you in the next one. Ciao.